In this Learning Byte video for Windows Small Business Server 2011 standard, we're going to talk about managing user accounts. When creating new user accounts, we'll use the Add User Wizard, which we can launch in a few different ways here in the SBS console. Right on the home page in the Getting Started tasks, there's a section for adding users, computers, and devices, which includes a link to add a new user account. In addition, we have our Frequent Tasks area, and Add a New User Account is right at the top of the list. Of course, we can always go up to the Users and Groups tab where we can see all of our users and manage user roles and groups as well. Here in the User Tasks pane, we can see several different tasks that relate to managing our user accounts, including, of course, a link to add a new user account. Let's go ahead and start that wizard now. We just need to enter a few simple pieces of information about our user to create the account, and then the SBS wizard will take care of the rest. We have a number of different predefined user naming conventions available that we can select from, but of course we can also enter in anything we like inside the username box. I'm just going to go ahead and stick with first name, last initial for both the username and the email address. We can also enter in a description for this user and a telephone number. At this point, to set most of the properties for this user account, we can select a user role. Several user roles are defined by default when SBS is installed, including the standard user, the network administrator, and standard user with administration links, which you would see in the remote web access page. We've also created a couple of additional user roles, including a marketing user, which we'll use for Jeff Phillips. Finally, we just need to enter in a password that meets our password policy requirements. The wizard lets us know with our green checkboxes that the password meets our policy requirements, and then we're ready to add the user account. As we can see, a number of different tasks are automated by the wizard in order to create the account. Once the user is created, we have the ability to assign an existing computer in the SBS environment to this user or add a new computer for the user. Check out the Connect Computer Learning Byte video to see more about adding computers to the SBS environment. Let's take a closer look at the properties for the user that we just created to see what it means to inherit the properties from the marketing user user role. On the General tab, we can see the information that we entered in when we were creating the user. In the Remote Access section, we can also see that the user has been granted the right to access the remote web portal, but was not granted the ability to connect to the SBS environment using a virtual private network connection. This was defined in that Marketing User User Role. In the Email section, we can also see that mailbox quotas are enforced with a mailbox size of 2 gigabytes. We can of course adjust these properties after the user has been created, but it's easy to make sure that all your users are set up the way you want by using the add user wizard and an accompanying user role. On the computers tab, we can see all of the computers in the environment that the user has access to. And we are also able to adjust the access level for that user on the different computers. For Jeff, let's go ahead and make him a local administrator on his own PC. We also have settings that control shared and redirected folders in the SBS environment. Here we can see that we're enforcing a 2 gigabyte quota for shared folder space, as well as not redirecting folders. Again, this is something that is inherited from that marketing user user role. But we can go ahead and select that on an individual user account basis. In the groups section, we can see all the different groups that this user belongs to. The Contoso Marketing Department was added to this user again through that user role. And finally, we have the websites that this user is allowed to access. We can control this by looking at each individual resource and selecting which users have access to those resources, or we can do it from the user's perspective and select which of the resources this particular user should have access to. So that's a quick look at adding users and the user properties in the SBS 2011 environment. Thank you for joining us for this Learning Byte, and I hope to see you for future Learning Byte sessions.